Good morning and thank you all so much for joining our first ever Little Bricks training session. We're, we're so, so grateful and truly humbled and like I said, just so grateful that you take the time out on a Friday morning, a sunny Friday morning, well it is Millsborough anyway, to come and join us and have a look at some of the practices, um, some of the processes, some of the things that we do with Bespoke Financial Group up in Teesside um, that sort of help us get the results that we do. And more than that, really become better people and human beings and, and become better at our job and protect more families and get more people in the mortgages, etc. You know, so thank you so much. We're going to try and blast it out in an hour. We'll do our best to stick to that. Um, for those of you who know me well and know how much I like to talk, good luck with that one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we are going to get started right now. So, some of the people on the call, we've got Jerry, Matt Chapman, Sarah Coleman, Dan Mumford, Chris Hall. Sharon Stark, like Laura O'Donnelly, some of the top people in all of the UK. I'm so, so, so grateful for that. Thank you. Um, thanks for taking the time out to come and see us. So this morning is the first ever Little Bricks training session. We're so, so grateful if you've all been here today. It means a lot to us. I'm going to talk to you about what Little Bricks actually means, a few processes. We're going to do a visualisation session first, then we're going to do a little bit about technicals, then we're going to go into communications. So first of all, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Lee Flanagan, Lee Michael Walter Flanagan, actually, Irish name. I'm from Winnie Banks in Middlesbrough, which is sort of like the Bel Air, the hidden, the crown jewel of the North East. Well, believe that if you may. Um, I couldn't be any more proud of being a Teesider. Could not be any more prouder. I think it's a real strength of mine. And within this industry, coming in the industry, when I joined 10 years ago, I had a bit more hair, I had a few less pounds, a couple of less chins then, but you know what? It was a very different game. It was full of the, all, the, all them old grey men in old grey suits with the briefcases who looked down the snow unit loads at me and you guys up here. But we're taking the game back now. It's ours. We're going to reclaim it and give it back to the people, OK? And we're going to do it with clash and humility. We're just going to be ourselves because we're more than enough. So I've been in the game for 10 years, five years at uh, um, Bespoke. I think that I'm very fortunate. I surround myself with the best people in the UK, Simon Walton, Kelly Bird, Michelle Carter, Darren Rawson, Cheryl Wilson, Sarah, Sarah Coleman, Carla, Jordan, Nathan Steele, my sister Louise. Such amazing people. And I'm so grateful to met so many amazing people on the way. When I joined the business 10 years ago, my life was very, very different. Um, I, was a, I was an addict. I was a drug addict, an alcoholic. I spent half my life partying. I'd lost my house. Um, I was homeless on the streets. I think I had like 70, 80 grand worth of debt. And the insurance gods chose me and smiled upon me. And they gave me the grace to work harder than anybody else in the UK. I genuinely believe that I do do that. And I just got to work earlier than everyone else. I stayed, I stayed up late than everyone else. Like, you, you, you don't know. Like, I've been a fucking hell and back on this one, but you know what? This game, this industry, working with people like you has completely changed my life. And I really want to give that back now, like we have a bespoke to as many people as we can and, and really spread the world. I think kindness is a superpower. I'm going to go through it today. A couple of little stories from when I started out. One time I didn't have no petrol. Well, I didn't have a car, I did, but I couldn't afford the car insurance. So I had to walk 10 mile to an appointment and 10 mile back because I couldn't afford the bus. I got admitted to hospital once for malnutrition. Three days without food. <coughs> I went on a training course with 20 quid off. Um, the girl I was with at the time, God bless her, she got me a, a suit. It wasn't like a, I like one of the nice suits you see today. It was, <laughs> it was, a, it was like a, a tent with pinstripes on it. It was massive. And um, I had one shirt in the middle of May. And every single night when everyone else went in the bar, because I had no money, you put your bed and breakfast. So I got five breakfasts that week. Every single night on the training course. I'd go back on my, wet sh my shirt and wash it in the bathtub, soap and water, a little bar of soap, and just hope it'd dry up and put it on the radiator every single night. Um, on the Friday, it didn't dry out. I went on the training course. It was dripping wet, soaked through. You could see my little nipples through the wet shirt and everything. But you know what? I didn't turn around. I didn't go running. I faced my adversity. I did the test, and, and here I am today. But you know, all them experiences, all them, all them hardships, all them pieces of adversity, Turn them into a positive. Greatness comes from adversity. You've got the courage to stand up to it, to face it, look it in the eye, and just keep on marching forward. Just keep on showing up. And I genuinely believe when I come in, because of them tough times, I had an advantage on everyone else because they hadn't had it as, as tough as what I had. 
um, I automatically assumed to myself that I was a little bit braver, a little bit tougher than other people. Maybe it's true. Maybe I was just a dickhead and made bad choices. But you know what? I con confidence con's the key word in confidence, right? That's a key part of the word. I con my own brain to think I was tougher. So that's a little bit about me. I've got beautiful children, Honey and Kit. Um, I help raise a little boy called Bailey, who's like a call exceptional man. Um, I work with the best people in the world that spoke, and we're going to get cracking now. So, to the first session today, we're going to talk about the power of visualization. Okay, so there's something called tracking when it comes out of visualization, something that I believe in massively. I always believed when I was walking that 10 mile journey, 15 mile journey, I was laid in hospital bad. I was getting debt collectors letters, 70 grand worth of debt. I was having to get my wages and pay bills off hide my CCGs from the network. All these crazy things, credit check. Oh, who's ever done a credit check when they've got no money? And they've got about 10 CCGs. Who's ever got a Christmas and they've got no money to buy the kids a Christmas present? The shame and the guilt, all these things. But even through them moments and dark times, in my head, I was the overall top firm principal. I was the top advisor. I was the best looking woman. I was the fastest man. I was driving the car I wanted to drive. I was in the house I wanted to be in. And I genuinely think I've got the power to manifest things in reality. I think it's a gift given to me. I'm a believer. You know, when you're a kid, we start off and we all believe, if girls believe in Disney princess, don't they? They all want to get kissed by a prince charming. I want to score a goal with a bit of new Bernie Slave and all. He man with my sword, whatever it is. Somewhere along the line, we stop believing in miracles, don't we? We stop believing in Santa. We stop believing we could be the hero. And we would just settle. We just settle. And you know what? That happened badly to me in a bad, bad way. And it, it was a dark, dark time and a dark area for me to be in. But this game has, has blessed me with, it, with the power to visualize things, to dream big, big dreams and, and try and make them come true. So when you go tracking, now I live in the moment. So when I get out of the bathroom at night time, I get a towel and I raise it up my head as if it's the butterfly, flag, as if we're at the box and we've just been named over on top. Um, I've got all my crew down with me. All the t sanders all the bespokers, we're there. Proud as punch. And that homeless kid, that junkie, you know, he's not a junkie, he's not homeless no more, they're there. I want to be a representation that you can make change if you work hard enough and if you're brave. And you can make a difference in people's lives if you want it bad enough and you're brave enough to go after it. I visualise a great relationship with my children. I visualise being a dad like Stephen Gorman. I visualise being in the house I want to be in. I visualise owning a property in Spain with Terry Blackburn, my brother, which we've visualised since day one. I visualise... Sarah or Carla being named overall top advisor in the UK, which in my opinion you already have. I do things like I wear the aftershave I want to wear on that night. I live in the moment so I can touch it, I feel it, I can smell it. It's all familiar to me, you see. These things don't ever shock me when I get there because I've lived out so, so consistently, so precisely over and over in my head. And once I'm there, with the butterfly flag in the air, I just rewind back over, right to the start. And you know what I do then? I know the way there, I know what it's like to get there. I just walk towards it. It's hard, it's, it's tough days, I don't want to get out of bed some days, I feel down. I have a lot more down days than most, trust me, because I'm a little bit fucked up, but it is what it is. So I get, you know, I just walk towards where I want to be, that's called tracking, that's living in the moment. That's living inside of the moment, okay? I don't like that camera being there, I like it there, but <laughs> I really hear that camera. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so... Where I am with, with the visualization thing, okay? So tracking is so, so important. Just live in the moment and walk towards it. Three books that you should be reading. You should be reading things like The Secret. You should be reading things like The Alchemist. You should be reading things like a book called Rooks. There's three stages of manifestation. The first one's delusion. You've got to be a little bit delusional what you want to do. You've got to be a little bit gone to what you... If you're vision board, you're dream board, I can show you mine. It scared the life out of you and you'd laugh at me. People have laughed at me all my life. I don't care, whatever. Make it that scary, it makes your butterflies go in your tummy. And then you've got to be persistent with it. Champions just show up, they're persistent day in, day out, day in, day out. They don't have a superpower. Champions and rich people have got problems, they've got self doubt, they have bad days, they have dark days, but they just show up and get on with it. And then you've got to show gratitude and everything you do. Do all that with enthusiasm. Show the world how grateful you are. You know what? Life becomes so, so great. It really, really does. You have not because you asked not. Remember as a kid, you had a Christmas list. And you'd write out what you wanted. For any 80s kids on the, on the call, we all wanted to scale electrics, didn't we? Or a He-Man figure. Do you remember that? Or the girls wanted, one my sister wanted, My Little Pony, or Care Bear. He didn't wonder, is that a bit too much for Santa to bring me? He just wrote it down. He didn't wonder why, or how am I going to get that? You just asked for it. You have not, because you asked not. Up your game. 
You build the world in seven days, you think you can't get you a Tesla. I'll get you to do it for a thousand pound a month. Up your game, start asking for more. Come on. It's got nothing to do with you, how it's going to happen or where it's going to work. Just let go, stop it. Your inhibitions, and you're thinking, how oh, is it going to work? That might not happen. All that stuff, get you nowhere. Let go, start dreaming big again. Dream big and aim low. What I mean by aim low is, there's no escalator to the top of, this, to the, top of the mountain. You can't, get, you can't take the lift. You've got to walk up them stairs. You've got to walk really fucking hard. Okay? So dream really big, but aim low. Aim on them little jobs and just do job after job after job after job. Too many people in this industry, I see them come and go, right? Better salesmen than me, better principals than me, taller than me, have more hair than me, or whatever else. But you know what? They dreamt on big dreams constantly. They had a big contract at Bain Q where they're going to stand everyone up. Or their uncle worked at Rinkson's Biscuit Factory, the MD, and he's going to get all thousand staff to stand up for life insurance. And you spend that much time chasing that big dream, you miss out on the little bricks, the fives and tenors. Aim low, aim low all the time. You've got to aim low on things and just dream big and just keep on going them little bricks all the time. Constantly, okay, brilliant. So now we're going to walk on to self talk. Before we do two seconds, we load that. Yeah, of course. So we're going to load this, give us two seconds, we'll load the camera. I'm a little short ass, my husband's too big the camera for me. I'm sort of like a little bit all over. We'll go really low, so around there, please. There we go. Is that better? We'll be a <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so. Self-talk. Self-talk's the most important talk of the day. You talk to yourself, and I know you do. Don't ever say I don't. You, you know you talk to yourself. We all do. It's the most important talk to, to, in the full day you'll ever do. Apart from maybe the ones with your children, your wife, or husband. So you better talk to yourself in a nice manner. You better treat yourself with some love and respect. That. If you don't treat yourself with love and respect, and you don't talk to yourself that way, do you think anyone else is? Make yourself feel good. Tell yourself, I really like you, Lee. You know what I'm in my dark days, right? I was going through fucking hell. I remember getting asked by Janine, she said to me, I always find a razor and toothbrush and all the, you know, the personal things that you get yourself ready with little, in the bath. She didn't understand why it wasn't in the sink where the mirror was. Do you know why? I couldn't look in the mirror. I hated myself that much. Some deep shit there, in it? But you know what? We saw it. I was like, fuck, it's really bad, that lady. Now I get up, I say to myself, I fucking, you're all right, you know, like, you help loads of people. I dropped to my knees and I said, thank you to, the God, to God. He saved me. Like, he put me out of some bad scrapes. He's a bad dude. Trust me. He is a bad dude. And he can make everything right for you. I said, thank you for being here today. Thank you for another day. The fact you're all in this call today, the fact that you're all here, says that he's not finished with you yet. Your story's got, still got to play out. Some of you are going to make a difference. Some of you aren't. Some of you are going to take action and strike a match. Some of you aren't. But you're still here. You've got the opportunity. So say thank you for it. When you wake up and you start seeing gratitude, gratitude is such an important thing. You've got a bad side of your brain and you've got a good side of your brain. The bad side's got a supervisor, a little twerp with a little megaphone, a little hard hat on and a high vis, and you've got the good side. The good one's a great guy. If you wake up and go, oh, I'm tired, I didn't sleep very well, on the way to the toilet, you'll stub your toe, ah, I'll whack your knee like I just did. The next thing the boys will do after that, I promise you now, lads, raise your hand if I'm telling the truth. You'll go up have a wheel and you miss the toilet bowl. That annoys you because it goes on your feet. And you know she's going to shout at you. The day's off to a bad one already. The day's going wrong already, okay. That's down to you because you started off that negativity by saying, I'm tired, I didn't sleep very well. Oh, but I'm meeting with someone I don't like. He just made it. Instead of doing that, just be still. Be calm. Say, thank you for letting me wake up. I'm so grateful. Say a little prayer. Have a look at your picture, your kids. Have a look at your dream board. Get your pictures. Get an album on your, put on your phone. I start looking at pictures of what you want and what you have and say, thank you for this. I'm so grateful. Today's an amazing day. It's sunny in Middlesbrough. I've got amazing family and friends on me. My children are healthy and happy. God bless. I work at Prime. It's the best network in the UK. I help so many people so much every single day. And I'm so, so grateful for that. Do you know what will happen? Instead of the negative side of your brain, the supervisor starts shouting out and manufacturing loads of negativity. He start, he's, he's there ready for one negative word from you. The minute you do, he's going to pick up one of his megaphone. It's a negative day. It's a bad day. It's all negative. He gets some self-doubt out. Get some of them bad memories out. Come on. He needs some lack of confidence. He needs some self-doubt. He needs some self-harm. Put bad people around him and they'll be manufacturing that all day long. They'll be working overtime. Trust me. He's a bad, bad supervisor. They'll be manufacturing that for you all day long. Good luck having a bad day with them at work. Make, fail all them. Get the good side into action. Get some positivity. Get some happiness. Get some good thoughts. 
get some gratitude, get some love, get some kindness. Get up in the morning and send three kind messages to people immediately. Go and make three people smile on the day. That's a nice way to start your day, that. The law of reciprocation will, sit, will, will, will kick in immediately. But kick in immediately. What a great way to start your day to make people smile. Okay, so abracadabra. Does anyone know what the meaning of abracadabra is? The Hebrew? Uh, the meaning of it is. is that what you say? Yeah, Hebrew. The Hebrew meaning for abracadabra. Who knows what it is? Anyone? Right. It means I will create as I speak. I create as I speak. Who knows? All the 80s kids. Paul Daniels from Middlesbrough, up the borough. He used to do abracadabra every single Saturday night. Who knew he actually meant that? I will create as I speak. But you know, when you peel it back a little bit, it makes total sense, doesn't it? It makes total sense. What you speak, you will create. Go home tonight. Think about the pizza you want. Pepperoni, extra cheese, thin base from Domino's. Get it, order it. I guarantee it'll taste like what you thought it would do. You're creating as you speak. It's as simple as that. Some of you are going to do it and some of you are Those who want to will. Those who don't won't. Up your game. You have not because you asked not. Start believing. Ask him for more. Right, you're the final one here before we move on to the next session. Who's in your wagon with you? We all want to go to our final destination. We all want to go to paradise. We all want to go to the place that makes us happy. It might be our home in Spain. It might be our own home. It might be putting our mum and a granny flat in the, in the house. It won't be me, that one. Trust me. You haven't met Margaret. <laughs> it might be the weight you want to be. It might be um, the watch you want to wear, the car you want to drive. You might want to win an award. You might want to be a millionaire. You might want to employ people. You might want to write a book. Whatever your dream is, God's blessed you with your dream. It's a vision that's exclusive to you only. Nobody else has it. So don't share it with no one so they can put you down and mock you because they can't see in your head. Only you've been given that gift. Only you've been given that gift. So make sure you get in your wagon before yourself and your, and your destination of paradise to make all your dreams come true. The people you want with you, your theory of five. Who's in the wagon with you? Is your partner there? Does she believe in you? Does she trust you? Has he got your back? Are your children there? Have you got your best mates in with you? Right, good. Buckle in. I'm going to put a clear destination in the sat nav, and then we're just going to listen to the instructions rather. Who's in your wagon with you? Can you count on these people when the, when the chips are down? Are they going to support when you're having a bad time? Are they going to be there for you? Are you going to be there for them? Do you love them? Are they a good crack? Because you you've got to enjoy the process. It's more about the process than the product. You've got to enjoy the actual journey more than getting there. You know, when you get there and you win, it's not as enjoyable as the crack job on the way there. Somebody laughs in this little office up here. I had a ball before with Nathan and, and Jordy Galloway and Michelle and Simon and all the guys. Sarah go, it's been the best times of my life. You can't take the memories away. It's like, enjoy that journey. Make sure you're good people. And on your journey to work paradise, understand with your theory of fight, right? You're going to go the wrong way. You're going to have to pull over for a pit stop. You might get a flat tire. You might run out of fuel. You might break down if it's someone else. That's just part of the journey, isn't it? But have faith. Keep the faith. Understand where you're going. Just keep on driving because you've got your pals with you and you're having your family. Okay, so that is self-talk. That's abracadabra. That's your, who's in your wagon with your theory of fives. And that's changing your habits, becoming a slave to your habits, and they'll change your future for you. We're now going to go on a little video now. I want you to talk about habits, right? I want you to stop watching Coronation Street. I don't think... Sorry about this camera thing. I don't think Ken Barlow can change your life. Well, this next man I'm going to put on, I can't even tell you what the man means to me. Watch him. These are the type of things you should be watching. Cut out Netflix. Champions don't watch Netflix. Not during the week, anyway. What books are you reading? You are what you eat. Same as your diet. That's how I got so big. <laughs> then same thing with your brain as well. Okay, so put this video on. Kelly Amory, please. Thank you. When I was homeless, I had a lot of time to myself. Actually becoming homeless was exactly what I needed because God needed my undivided attention. And he had it for three straight years because I had nothing. And you know, I'm just one of them people where sometimes you just got to get my attention, you know what I mean? So I can't tell you about no education because I ain't got one. I ain't got no degree in nothing. I've been told my whole life you'll never be nothing simply because of the way you talk. You know how many times I've been, the way I talk, man, because, you know, I'm kind of country, I don't really, I don't really speak that good. You know, my, my English is not eloquent. I know that. But I ain't never let that stop me. When I first got on TV at NBC seven years ago, they sent a, uh, the, 
a linguist to see me. I didn't even know what that was. I thought this lady was finna show me how to make spaghetti or something. <laughs> I didn't know, I never heard this. What is a linguist? So the woman comes in my office and she says, are you ready to begin? And I said, excuse me, ma'am, who are you? She says, I'm your grammar coach. I said, for what? She said, NBC is of the understanding in order for you to be successful on daytime TV, you're gonna have to learn how to speak more eloquently. Oh, I said, I ain't finna do all that there. <laughs> she said, excuse me? What did you just say? I said, I ain't finna do all that there. She said, say what you just said to me again slowly. I said, I ain't finna do all that there. She said, that's exactly why I'm here. Because that is improper grammar on every level. I said, yeah, but that's, I talk just like this here. She said, say that again. I said, I talk just like this here. She said, slow that down. I say, I talk just like this here. What's the problem? She said, if you don't learn how to speak more properly, you'll never be successful. I said, who told you that? You walked into my office. I'm already on TV. <laughs> yeah. You know, wh where are you trying to go with this? See, the reason I'm not going to let you change my mind is because I've never known you up until this point. Now, I've made it to this point without you. I don't know how you figure I ain't going to get the rest of the way without you. So I'm just looking at this lady. She says, listen to me. If you don't learn how to speak better, you'll be off TV. I said, okay, well, let me ask you something. I said, which one of these sound best to you? I am broke or I'm is rich? Because I'm is rich. That's Steve Harvey there. That's somebody who I watch daily. The guys in the office, I know Francis Howie and Emmy Dent and, and Carlos, and massive, massive fans of them. They're the type of things you should be watching. They're the type of things you should be putting in your brain constantly. You watch that man five, ten times a day, you can't tell me that's not better than him. Those only senders now. Whoever's on that programme or Holly Oaks, whoever you all watch, that's better, trust me. Okay, so the next one is, I'm going to introduce you to something now that's going to, in our opinion, revolutionise what we're doing. It's not just about the products that we're doing, life insurance and mortgages. You can pick up this next schedule and put it into any industry with any product. I'm going to introduce a man called Simon Walton who joined us three years ago as a part-time sales advisor. We're now going to make him our, our training director. He's devising with and for us and for the group, which we're happy to roll out to the full UK because what you share multiplies and grows. Something very special, something very simple. And someone's actually going to help you sharpen your sword and achieve things you never thought possible. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Simon. So, there you go, mate. Cheers, thank you. I'll stand here. So, everyone, uh, my, like I said, my name is Simon, and one of the new, the new training directors at Bespoke. What I want to go into today with you, and it's just going to be quick, is just how we do things. Now, what we've created, the triangle, the training triangle. Some of you will have heard this. Some of you have worn you might be in the industry, you might not be in the industry, it doesn't matter. You can adapt this to absolutely any business that you want to do. You really can. It's made up of three key elements. The introduction, your phone call, your making of the appointments. If you can get that part right, the rest of it is fine. When you see the client, everything else, everything else follows through. The second part is the appointment. It's how you conduct yourself, it's what you say, it's what you, what you, how you put yourself across and how that client perceives you. Remember, it only takes five seconds for someone to judge you. And for women, it's actually three seconds. You're a better judgment of character, obviously. And then the last one is your referral. This keeps that cycle flowing constantly. You get this last key right, and this will just constantly go on. It's your engine. It's what's going to keep you going. We're going to do different, different things on these parts as well. We're going to do a little bit today on the uh, four box, which Lee's going to do in a second. But the biggest thing you can take from us is the experience that we've got. It's not about reading the best books and, you know, having all the, the key elements of all the best speakers in the world. It's not that. It's six years, seven years of experience, 
accidents, mistakes. You know, there's sometimes we'll go see clients and we'll look and think, what was that advice all about? We've been able to adapt that and grow and just keep adding and adding and adding to that portfolio. That's why we're creating this, to pass it on to everybody. Again, if you're not in the industry, don't worry about it. This is going to be adaptable to absolutely everybody. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to pass back to Lee. He's going to go through one of the processes right now with you. And hopefully you just take as much as you can, listen down, make notes, do absolutely everything. Because if you follow this one part, this is a tiny part of everything that we're going to do. I promise your business will just fly through the roof. Anyway, I'll put you back to Lee. Here he is. Thanks, Joseph. Where are you missing? Thanks, brother. How special is that? Thanks, Simon. The youngsters, the young guns now, bespoke group in the Primus family, Laura O'Day, and, and some of the other guys that have come on, they're just phenomenal. Simon has got aspirations to go on and do amazing things with training, and they're going to pick up this training skill, we're going to give it to people coming out of jail, addicts, people who need a second chance. We're going to teach you how to sell properly, but insurance, teach you what they want. Sam is going to be fundamental and key to that, so couldn't be any more proud of the man. Um, he's a fantastic person, as are all the other young guns in the sport group. I believe that children are the future. If we teach them well, you know, let them lead the way. Boom. So, next one, we're going to talk first about referrals. Give me two seconds while I get these in line. The questions we get asked most about in our industry when people come up to us, but we've had some of the best people in the UK come, Matty Chapman, my mates come up, Karen Scully, and a very good friend of mine. Um, Chris Hall, legend. We've had a come up from a little while ago. This is a bit of a Fiona, um, Louise have been up here. Some amazing people. It makes me feel humbled. It makes me feel great when they come up. The key thing we get asked most of all is referrals. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a life insurance, mortgages, whatever it is you're doing. If you can learn how to get referrals, you'll be totally fine. A lot of people that were into by leads, right? I don't know how they survive it. They certainly won't survive over the next five years' time. It's just getting more, more challenging and more difficult. And referrals, I think life's replicant in, 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 in how you feel emotionally, how you, be, how you behave, to your appointment itself. When it comes to referrals, you have not because you ask not. And it's about ask, how are you asking, okay? There's different types of referrals. The best people ever get referrals, in my opinion, Darren Rolson, Janice Whitmore, Terry, Barks, um, Oliver Lodge is the king of referrals. I don't think the man could be beat when it comes to referrals. I've seen him walk past somebody in the street and just get the phone up, give him 20 numbers without even asking. He's unbelievable. He's the best at all time getting referrals. Trust me. And I've worked with all the best ones. That man, the best of this. Different types of referrals. We've got a full catalogue, a full module here that's Simon's developing. And you can all have this, by the way, as well. It's free to share. Pound for names. Let me get this up here. Pound for names. Fact finds. RDD. Frogs. Mutual friends. Peter and Pepsi Nights. Jordi Galloway. Sarah. Old school referrals, rewards and incentives, free will, social media, tag people in, sports teams, client profiling. Today we're going to focus on client profiling, okay? When it comes down to client profiling, it's really important this next section. You need to have in your own mind what your, your perfect client looks like, what your perfect person is going to say looks like. Can everyone take two seconds now, right? I just want you to write down a few attributes of what your perfect client would look like. I'm just going to give you 10 seconds or so now. Just write down, we'll get in your own head a couple of. Key attributes, what your, your perfect client would look like. A, a clear one would be um, having children, right? Because you want to sell them some life insurance. I know what Mark Chapman's writing, income protection, all day long, brother. Okay, good. I bet you're all writing down similar sorts of things, right? Now, if we don't tell the person you're sitting with or you're on the phone to, the client who's just invested in you, the person who, really funny, I speak to my friend Ellen Gorman and we ask people if they have STDs, if your parents have survived, did they die of cancer, what type of cancer was it, how long did they suffer for, give me your bank details, but you, you won't ask for any referrals. What a cock I do, this industry's got it. And it's a common theme. People from all across the UK have the same issue, but don't worry, that was at hand. It's a very easy process. Just got a process in there, take emotion out of it, and ask these, just follow these simple processes, and you will get. On this one, I don't want to sound arrogant, right? I guarantee you, you'll get 10 names per person. I promise you. We've got a conveyor belt of people doing this constantly. People from non industry coming in and just being referral machines. Okay, so you've got to know what your perfect client looks like. At the end of the, the, the appointment, you've got to sit down and speak to your client. For those of you who are using this, and we've all used it, if you can think of anybody else who could benefit from a free review or any life insurance or income protection, if you match up, um, can you think of anyone? 
then you go quiet, it goes awkward, and they'll say to you, not now, but I'll, um, it's like your email address on the card, I'll, I'll send you some more, or I'll ask the girls at work, or I'll get back, I'll get like, your number, I'll give you a call. It's a polite way of saying no. You're not asking properly. You're not asking properly, okay? The way you need to ask is you've got to make it up. It's not about you, it's about how you make people feel. So what you can do at the end of the appointment, you're going to say, look, we're going to call my appointment John. John, I only work on recommendation. I'm extremely busy. It was Simon who passed me to you. Simon's a great lad. Kelly passed me to Simon. Kelly also passed me to Michelle. Michelle passed me to Sarah Coleman. Stevie Gorman passed me to Helen Gorman. Um, and, and likewise, I only work on referrals. I don't advertise. You won't see me outside Morrison's. I don't charge people to come on training courses on the year one. £600 a course or whatever it is, but I never really sold nothing. I'm just a salesperson and advisor who works on the power of recommendation. I'm the expert in the local area. So the last person I said, get this bit in. Simon said, you know everyone. He said that you know, got so many friends. You're a very popular lad. Everyone knows, knows you, John, and you'd be able to help me out. For that, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. When I say help me out, I want to help you out. I want to speak to your family. I want to speak to your friends. I want to make sure they've got the right cover in place. I want to make sure if, God forbid, someone dies or someone gets cancer, God bless. I'll be the first person to call and I will go and pay their wages for them. I will pay their house for them. I'll give their children a lump sum so they can enjoy all the nice things in life. I'll make sure if children don't get put in homes. That's what I do and I'm the best at it. Okay, so with your help, I'd like to speak to them people. What's in it for them? Well, I've got 10 free wills to give away. The wills are worth £140 with a very professional market leading company. I can't do any more than 10. And I'm sorry, John, I know you probably want to give me more than that, but I've only got space to speak to 10 people because I'll probably I'd get to meet three or four of them and some of them will be rolling over. I won't get to speak to them until next week. And my diary is that full with people to help because I'm that busy because the service is offering the free wills. I can't fit any more than 10 in. Once I've signed the number of them up, I'll come back and I'll give you £50 a referral or a bottle of wine for a referral or whatever it is that I'm going to incentivize you with. I'll come back and give you your gift, your prize, your reward, your money, whatever it is. And I'll get another 10 then. I would be grateful, I thank you. Okay, so how are we going to do this then? You know when you've got a Starbucks, right? And you've got that guy in front and he says, can I have a caramel mocha chotta latte with a tart cheese, sprinkle of chocolate on with soya milk? Two sugars in, please. He's asked that specifically and that concisely. They even write his name inside the cup. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? We've got to start doing the same thing. We've got to profile our perfect clients. We've got to explain, look, I'm looking to speak to and give free wills away to four groups of people. It's called the four boxes. The first box we're going to speak about, I'm going to do a Starbucks on you. I'm going to explain exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking to speak to people who you love. I'm looking to speak to people who are maybe your family, your partner, your husband, your brother, your sister, your mum, your dad, your in-laws, those who love your in-laws. I need to speak to just three or four of them. I know, but I've got loads of family. But look, I've only got 10 free wills here for I'm going to come back next time. I need to speak to three or four of them. I'm going to write the names down. And I'll get the numbers off at the end of, the, end of this, little, this little game we're going to play here. Is that okay? Keep saying that to them all the time, right? Is that okay? Is that okay? Do you understand that? Thank you. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Use your hands. Show humility. Show class. Is that okay? Thank you. I really appreciate it. It gives an element of control the way there. It gives an element of control. It's false control. Because you're the one dictating the conversation. Is that all right? Is everyone sitting there in? Everyone's nodding back at me. There you go. It's working. There you go. We're on now. I'm asking numbers now, actually. Right, cool. So, your second box. I'm looking to speak to people who have got children. I'd like the children to be under the age of 16. I'm going to do them a free family trust. I'll give them a free will each for each parent. I'm going to try and review the, the life insurance to make sure they've got the, free, the correct cover in place. I need to look at the critical illness conditions. So many people have not got critical illness, they've got terminal instead. I need to speak about income protection of people. God bless with everything that's happened. I don't want any of your friends to be off work. God bless. Not be able to pay the bills, get CCJs and black marks and put the family at risk and know that you've met an insurance expert and you didn't pass them on. We can't have that. Okay, so just number three or four of you, you your friends. we have got children, they're 16, and I want to give them a call. Okay, go. One, two, three. That'll do. That'll do. I've got loads of... I know, but listen, I've only got 10 free wills, John. I, I, 
and I'm too busy. I'll come back next time. Now we're going to go on to self-employed people. I need to speak to self-employed people. Like I just said there, about COVID and everyone what's happening in the world, we're all aware of our own mortality. We're all going to be off work at some point, okay? It's important that your friends know that you pass me on to them and I'm going to bubble wrap their savings. I'm going to bubble wrap them, make sure they can pay their mortgage, make sure that they can feed their children, make sure if lockdown happens or whatever it may be and they're off work, they're able to pay their bills. They're not under threat financially. That's my job. That's what I do. The first person you call in the emergency is not the ambulance, it's me. Call the ambulance afterwards. I'll be there before them as well with a check. That's what you can count on me. Okay? So self-employed people, joiners, plumbers, tilers, um, accountants, insurance salesmen, mortgage advisors, whoever it may be, you've got to speak in that zone, okay? That's how you profile your client. Remember, always think about this. You have not because you asked not. Think about being at Starbucks, which, by the way, is Madame Michelle's favorite company, somebody who we mold and visualize ourselves being on the ethics of that company on the next level. He's ordering a toffee, hazelnut, char tea, latte with a chocolate sprinkle on the top. Bam. Get rid of that lame asked request in. Can you think of anybody who would want the life insurance? Oh. It's lame, it's not good enough no more, and you've got to up your service levels here. You've got to get better at what you're doing. Referrals are the fuel you put in your wagon. Remember the wagon? We've well, had people in your wagon on your way to paradise. If you don't put the referrals in there, that's your fuel, you're going to run out, and then there's no fixing that. Sorry, you're done. You're done. The next box, make a fun one. I'm looking to speak to little, fat, bald people who are quite loud, speak with a funny tone, and sometimes look a bit like ET when they get out of the shower. That's not me saying that, that's a rumor going around. So, and if you're thinking it's me, you're out of order. So, have a bit of crack on that one. You've got to enjoy the process. You've got to be known as a decent person who has a bit of crack for people. You've got to speak to people. So, there's your four boxes there. You should have 10 numbers there. I promise you, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying my best not to be like big and arrogant here. We've took people from call centers, we've took people from coaching schools, we've took people from schools, from scaffolding yards, from warehouses. I should be dead three times over, but this referral thing changed my life. And you'll get 10 names, every single person you see. If you're on the phone, Callum Snowden ran me last week, a superstar in the UK, I'm struggling on the phone. At the end of the sale, do the four boxes, I've got the 10 names, what I'm going to do now, John, put your phone on loudspeaker and I want you to WhatsApp the names over to me. All the contacts over, but don't worry. In the meantime, I'm gonna write a message out to you, send it to you. I'd like you to copy, and paste it. It's 2020, we all know copy and paste. Now when you send the message out to the 10 names you've given me, and the message will say something like this. I've just had lay rounds, good lad. Straight as a die, no bullshit, no great old, no great old suit, no briefcase. He didn't talk no nonsense, he wasn't trying to upsell or sell me any utility or nothing like that. He come round, he fixed my life insurance, give me some peace of mind, he give me a free will. He's gonna give you a call. If you do your couple with him, he'll give you a free will. He's a good lad. If you're not interested, just let him know. No problem. Promise you that's the way to go. So that referral is now setting you up. It's not. It's not a cold call. It's not a warm. You're going to need oven gloves on the phone to make these type of calls. They're red hot when you... I promise you now, they're red hot when you call them. They're ready to go. They've got the kettle on. They've got custard cream ready for you to rock up. They want insurance. They're wanting you to fix it because your mates just told them they're a great lad. When you ring them up, we're going to do a phone calls next. You pick up that phone, what's the response you get? Scripts are done. Like, remember I said the other day, closing's finished. It is. Closing's done. Closing's done. Phone calls and scripts, they're, they're, they're nearly done as well. Trust me. They're nearly done as well. And that's because we're doing the marketing before the sales. You get the marketing part right. You, you embed your name and your reputation because you're consistent and you're kind and you're giving away three things. It's all about the client and not you. Them scripts, I say it all the time and some of these people who are trying to sell sales coaching, like they couldn't sell a hump to a camel. Why are we listening to these people? What have they done? We'll never charge a betrayal, trust me. So they say things like this, I'm looking to grow my business. I need to speak to your, me, I, my. They're a narcissist, that's narcissistic language. No, 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 I want to help you, your family, your friends. Free wills, you'll be the best person. You can't have one of your family or friends sick enough work and know that you've seen me, a professional, 
you covered yourself and not them. You've got an obligation now. You need to pass one to them. You know, like Kelly passed one to you. Use power names. Use power names. Okay, that's how you do the four boxes. Think about the Starbucks, profile your clients, get a text message ahead, give them a call within 24 hours. Darren Rolls from Way to Wake. That's cool. We're going to talk about phone calls next. So, over at Kelly and Marie, we're going to show you a little video now from what, in my opinion, write this bit down. This is the best principal in the UK. He will win the top protection title next year. I can't even tell you how proud I am of him, how much I love the man. He surrounded himself with brilliant people like Sarah, like Haley, like Angela, like Stevie Gorman. Keep your eye on this man. He's the best principal in the UK now. There you go. Thank you. Ah, yeah. So, how has the four boxes helped me? Um, I think the four boxes has transformed the industry. I think if you can sit down and make your referrals like specific to who you want to speak to, whether that be homeowners, people who are self-employed, people who play sports, parents, um, bald people, as Leo always likes to say. But it makes that it makes that lead that little bit more specific. And when you're speaking to that person, you know why they're on the phone. So you know you want to get your kids protected or they've got a mortgage to protect or they're speaking about being self-employed and can they get income protection. So what it does is just prioritises your referrals um, it just makes it easier once you get on the phone to them and it makes it easy for the client to then give you them referrals as well because you're being specific it's not just give me anyone that you know you're breaking it down into sectors and it becomes easier it works this is nathan who does five grand a month in premium in year one of his business it works i promise you so now we're gonna you've got the referrals you're gonna go to the next part of the process which is phone calls phone calls are without a shadow of a doubt the hardest part of the job i don't care what part of the country you're in i don't care how good your app is I don't care how good your website is. I don't care how well you speak. Phone calls are the hardest part of the job, and they always will be. And the more important now than ever, what we're locked down and people not wanting to leave the house. I don't believe we'll be doing many business appointments many more with mortgage advisor life insurance. Other industries on the on the call, I'm not sure. That's up to you guys. But the world's going digital. You're gonna to have to do things over the phone. People are not gonna see you anymore. Okay, so when it comes to doing a phone call, you've got to understand some. Sorry. So when it comes to doing a phone call, you've got to understand why you're making a phone call. I always ask this question, okay? They keep on asking things like, to make a sale, to make some money, to do my 501, none of that. You're making appointments to give out free advice and meet your obligation to John, your client, who'll give you the names of his family and friends so you can go and give them a free will, so you can help them. That's the only obligation you've got. When I was back in my head here selling, I'd say things like, look, let me come around and see you. I'll give you the best advice available, certainly in the Teesside area of the North East, without a shadow of a doubt. And that's not being rude, but I work so hard, I know that I'm good at my job. I'm going to give you the free advice, free. It'll take me 20 minutes, half an hour. And at the end of that, if you don't want to do, the, don't want to do it with me, that's fine. I'll help you go online with that media cap man or that opera singer blow. And you can do it online with them, no problem at all. That's all I'm asking for, the opportunity to give you some free advice. That's it. Then you're in the door. There's no obligation or nothing in there. Okay, so when you're doing your phone calls, make it easy. I hear people say all the time, look, I like to do them every day. Well, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're definitely doing it wrong. You should be doing your phone calls once, max twice a week, and that's it. Know your environment. Culturally, knowing your area. Are you doing phone calls tonight? Yeah, great, okay. England, you're on telly. Uh -uh. Bad number. Think about things. Look at the TV schedule. Understand your area. Your phone call should be getting done on a Thursday or a Friday night. You should be doing that at a certain time. My times, I will do Friday night, maybe five till seven before people kick in. Saturday morning, half night till 12. Some guys do it on a Monday night. Some people struggle. Thursday nights could be a good one. You know your area, guys. But try that out. I mean, there's nothing. There's no rules written down in premises or the FCA handbook saying you've got to call people on these days. Okay, two sir. Do what's right for you. Understand why you're making your phone calls. I'm going to give away some free advice. You need a process. Your process should be the following. An intro, a reason, and a close. It should take you 45 to 60 seconds. That's what a successful phone call should take. Hi, is that John? Hi, it's just Lee from Bespoke Financial Group. If he hasn't been sent the message from the guy previously, remember, the sound post is going to kick in now. I work for Bespoke Financial Group. Your friend... Pass your number on to me. I've just done all his life insurance. Give him a free will. He said he'd like me to give you a free will and give you some free advice. Um, 
free advice, no obligation. Are you available? Maybe it's Monday or Tuesday. I'll give you a phone call. Go quiet. He who speaks next loses. You're playing tennis with somebody who doesn't know you're playing tennis, are you? If you lose and you get outsold by someone who's not a salesperson, you need to do some work. You need to practice. Practice makes permanent, okay? The reality is when you do these phone calls now, because they're on the text message, hi, is that John? It's just Lee from Bespoke Financial Group. It's immediately they'll say, I've been expecting your call. I know you've got a free will. You did the life insurance. I'm all right, I've already got it. Or they'll say, yep, I need to see you. Whichever one they say, get your hand up in the air, click your finger and go, brilliant. I'm glad you've got life insurance. It shows that you care about your family. I need to have a look at that to make sure it's in the, in the right trust. Have you got income protection? What with COVID happening and people being off work? It's important we get to speak to you. I need to make sure that you've got the right deferment period. Are your critical illness condition up to scratch? Have your children got cover? Have they got critical illness cover? I'm going to stop saying the words like critical as well. Cancer, death. Being off work, not being able to pay your bills. The, the reality of not paying your bills now. In a credit score society. It's very important, okay? But these are the things that you've got, to be, you've got to be speaking to your clients about. Where do you do your phone calls? You come into somewhere nice and quiet. Move all chairs out of the office. Get off your ass. Walk around. Motion creates emotion. Write down on the boards. I'm making 10 appointments to help people there. Speak to yourself. I make appointments every single phone call I get. I'm brilliant on the phones. Listen to some music. Have a can of Monster. Have some Red Bull. Jordan Galloway's white chocolate buttons. Whatever floats your boat, eh? Whatever floats your boat. Have some coffee. Be ready to go. You can use the three C's. It's really important you're on point with these things, guys, and you've got a process. Have power names written down. When you go into a phone call, have a, is it earpods or airpods, these things all the kids wear? Have them. Have a spare pair of them. Have a phone charger. Those who work with me know how I feel about phone chargers. I'd rather you steal my wife than you have my phone charger. And when I ask you, can I have my phone charger back and you say to me, how much charge have you got, please? Expect a bottle of water at your head or something like that. So when you're doing your phone calls, get a set place. You have your referral book ready. You have a separate book ready with all power names on. A power name is somebody who's a power of influence within that group or that area. Okay? Get ready. I'm going to set off now. Let's go. The coffee's kicking in. Right, cool. So you get your power names. You get a referral book. You know your script. You've got your 10 appointments on the board. You know that your referrals are being sent around. You know where you are. You're going to start calling through and you're going to start helping people. You're going to underpin all this by the three C's. It's a communication technique that will improve your life. I promise you. It's going to make life so much better for you. Okay, so you're going to do what's the right thing for the client. You're going to give them free advice. You're going to try and book some appointments into your free will somewhere. Whatever they say is brilliant because you can always help them out. And that's phone calls. That's all you've got to do. Got to be consistent. You've got to do them once a week in a phone call club. You, you put your names on the board. You call round. Try and help people. That's it. You really look at you guys well at the old times on the call. Me, Chrissy, all Dan Mumford. Sorry, lads. Stevie G. You've got like WhatsApp now. You've got Facebook. Remember, if you're really good, right? I'm going to name Emmy Dent, Sam and Walton, Carla, Sarah, Matt Chapman. You've got some of the best in the UK here, okay? When they do referrals and they say, I'm going to get Matt to give you a call. I'm going to give Leo to give you a call. I'm going to give Sam Walton to give you a call. The first thing that they're going to do, right, is you're going to have a look at your social media page. For those of you who are going drinking beer in gardens with England hats on and whatever else, you're not that appealing to your perfect client. Your profile has your perfect client, so why don't you make some content that they'd like to see? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's common sense, isn't it? Look at Sarah Coleman, look at Sam Walter, look at Matt Chapman, you know, look at, there's, there's some fantastic, Nina Brown, there's some fantastic stuff going on social media. Emmy's the lettering. You've you profiled your perfect client, you've asked to get in touch with them, you've been given the opportunity, and you've got loads of jokes on your Facebook page. Class, well done. That's that one done. So make sure your Facebook page is ready to go and have a look at it and then just call through. Be persistent. Get off your ass, move around, smile and dial. Just keep on going. Play money ball. Understand it takes me 15 calls to make five appointments. That's one in three. It's £500 commission. So I get paid. What's 1500 quid to buy? It's £100 a call. So I'm just going to make calls all day long. If I'm going to stop the calls. I've hardened myself too because I know it's a necessary evil. On the other side of the fee is everything you ever wanted. 
On the other side of the fee is everything you ever wanted to. And let me tell you something now, listen, fee is a liar. It's lied to you since day one. Remember when you didn't dare drop off the bed as a baby because you thought you were going to like, drop off a cliff? It's that big. I didn't dare jump in the water or get the stabilizer off your bike. That's all it is with phone calls. Fear is a liar. It's lied to you since day one. Fuck fear. Right, okay, cool. So we're going to put an epic session on. We'll see if this video works now, guys. If it doesn't, I'm going to cut it short and just tell you about it. Cool. So, Kelly, thank you. Following the three C's has been the best thing I ever did, especially for phone calls. It's the most important part, the hardest part of the job as well, because once you've made the appointment, we all know it's plain sailing from there, but being able to follow the three C's throughout my phone calls, it's given better appointments, less cancellations, and just from the get-go when I walk in and I meet these clients, if the phone call's been good and they've got confidence in me already, then the rest of the sale is easy. Simon, telling us, um how important phone calls, the three C's are, how they'll change your life, how they make a necessary evil part of the job, the worst part of the job, easier, more slick, and a better process. So, you've got the referrals. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> you've got the referrals. You've made your phone calls. You've then got to go and do the business, all right? <laughs> If you can get really good appointments, you'll make more money you can possibly spend and you'll change your life. You'll change your family's life, your children's life. You'll build something there where you can get a passive income on. In a world where there's a recession of people, Zara laying people off, Starbucks, whatever. There's a recession on and we're out making thousands of pounds of money. It's a one-week training course. Like, you have to go to university. It's, it's, it's a blessing from God, this industry. Me for one, like, drops my knees every single day and say thank you for it. So, the appointment. I want to play a song on this one. I don't know if it'll work or not. So, when it comes to appointments, you're going to listen to loads of sales gurus saying you should be doing rapport building. No, you shouldn't. Rapport building is horrendous. You might as well sit down and go to them. I'm going to rapport build with you now, right, super person? I'm going to pretend that I'm interested upon you. It's done. Just be yourself. You're, you are everything you want to be. You're already everything you want to be. Don't rapport Bill. Don't be so blatant. Don't act. Just be yourself. Act interested. Be interested. So, ready, 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 write this down, please. In the words of a very wise prophet, stop, collaborate, and listen. Who sang that? That's how you sell. You stop, you be still, you collaborate with your client, and you listen to what they've got to say. You're playing tennis with someone who doesn't know you're playing tennis. You're a master swordsman fencing with somebody who hasn't got a sword. Come on. The fact that you're not selling is because your ego is getting in the way, or you're in too much of a rush, or you're unorganized. You've not practiced. Practice makes permanent. Practice makes permanent. Okay, so have a process. Listen to your client. Get your expectations at the beginning of the meeting. Say to the client, you know what? What do you want out of today? Use words like this. When you die, Matt, and you are going to die, I am too. We're all going to die. That's a fact. There's those who have got money for their children and the partner, and there's those who haven't. When you become a client of mine, I'll make sure that your children have got money. I'm the first person you call. You'll call me before you call the funeral director. When you get cancer, and listen, one of us is going to get cancer. I've got my cancer cover in place, and so have my children. God bless. You've got nothing in place. Would you like me to protect you and children? Because I can do that today. Or when you're off work and you can't pay your bills, or you can't pay your mortgage that you put all your life savings into, and you work 40, 50 hours a week to do, as well as put food on the table, I'll pay your wages for you. Would you like me to do that for you? Brilliant, okay, cool. Understand, you've got to be brave. You've got to say words like death. You've got to say words like cancer. You've got to say words like you are going to be off work. You've got to listen to what they say. Remember the children's names. Act interested. If they say, oh, I'm a big Everton fan, don't go, oh, I'm a Liverpool fan. Like, what are you doing? It's not about you. It's not your appointment. It's not your appointment. Listen to what the client's got to say. Collaborate with them. Be vanilla in certain areas. Let them have an opinion. Be interested in what they've got to say. I understand what you're saying, yeah. If you get it with a bit of a subject where they're going back and forth with each other because they're saying, oh, no, no, my mate at the pub there, fat Lee. He said that um, I shouldn't get that. Okay. 
So if I'm looking right directly at you now, I can see a six, you can see a nine. I can see a B, you can see a D. One of us can see a Q. Instead of us going back and forth, right? One, I just come around your way thinking and say, right, I understand why Fat Lee told you that. I can see what you're saying. If you should come around to my way, with 10 years of experience working for the number one firm in the UK, endless hours of training and experience and expertise, I'm going to explain to you in an educated manner why Fat Lee is wrong and I'm right for you and your family. And ultimately, when you die, I don't want your kids ringing Fat Lee. If you're at the pub, ring me and I'll deliver you some money for you and your family and make sure they get that at the right time and it goes to your mum and they get this house paid off for them. Say these words. Understand the value of your service. Understand your environment. When you're doing these appointments, say to your clients, say, say this thing, right? How long have you got today? Do you want me to do it quickly in 20 minutes, half an hour? Do you, do you want to do, I can get you covered tonight? You dictate everything. It's a free review. At the beginning of the meeting, just say, I'm going to stop at three watershed moments. The first moment is going to be children. Because really, we do three products, right? Death for the mortgage or for the kids. Cancer covers on the mortgage as well, and you do income protection. So mortgage cover for death and cancer, big bag of money for the kids, and pay your wage when you're off work. Then three products and that's it. Someone's going to say fib on here. I think you're fibbing saying it. No point in selling that. Waste of time. Cool. So listen, you're going to give them a big lump of money. Nobody, when somebody dies, the last thing you want to know is that you're going to get £400 a week or a month for the next 20 years. Give me a lump, lump sum. Life's short. We're all going to die soon. Speak to your clients, listen to what they've got to say, be brave. Speed kills. How do we know that? Well, we live in a society nowadays, right, where when I was a kid, my gran, God bless her soul, she used to take me to the butchers, Safeway, New Bowls, um, the, the bakers, the fruit and veg shop, super drug, and then I got the supermarket, and then I got a bus home, right? Nowadays, we just go online and get it all delivered to us. We live in a convenient society, an Amazon society. They don't want you there for two appointments. You've got to close it in one. You've got to close your appointment in one appointment. Explain that to them. Signpost what's happening next. Say these words continuously. Is that okay? Do you understand? Brilliant. Okay. Can we move on now? I'm glad you understand that. It's really good when I speak to a client who knows what they're talking about. Thank you so much. Get to the income and expenditure. Then you're going to go into a budget close. Being a salesperson is identifying something that the client needs. And then being able to deliver it to them for a budget they want to spend. That's it. Why you're arguing with clients going, that's not enough budget there. No, you need to spend more than that. They don't want to spend more than that. Just explain to them, look, I'm recommending that. If you can only go there, I want to put notes in place to protect myself. Well, having that's better than having that, isn't it? And you're not going to walk away from sales. I know you'll go, you'll go on the primus course and Richard will be talking, you'll go, yeah, I'll walk away from sales. I know you're lying, I know you don't. Come on, you're self-employed. Just explain to the client, that's not my advice, I'm a professional, fat Lee isn't. Listen to what I've got to say. What's your budget for death? How much can you allocate me so I can find your beautiful children, like I've done my children, a big bag of money when you die? And listen, I'm just going to repeat this again. You are going to die. 100%. We all are. And everyone's aware of their own, own mortality now. You're fortunate at that. Everyone's aware of their own mortality. Cancer, husband and wife, one is going to get cancer. So you both need covers, don't you? I want to protect you. And the bonus on that one, I'm going to give your children some free cancer covers. So. Would you like me to do that? God forbid something happens to you. Good. That's how you sell them an appointment. Speed kills, have a consistent process, use power names. If you're not consistent, you do a different service to John than what you did for Bob. Bob will tell Steve, and they're all over the place, they'll tell each other on the WhatsApp group. It's a lost. Have a code. Why Zuckerberg wears a black t-shirt all the time? He's known. He's consistent. Be consistent with your consistency. Great things happen. Okay, so we're going to try another video applicator. If it works, great. Hi, everybody. Lee's helped me with appointments because he's taught me how to stop, listen to the customer, get a calm way of doing it, um, have a structure, have a process, um, that's what he's told me, a structure of what I'm going to say to each customer, a process of where everything's going to go, and then to um, to really to be consistent with that and just keep that, do that uh, the same thing all the time, and then you can get it wrong, you've got a process, you're much more comfortable, you're more calm and collective. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Thank so, you. Is 
That was Sarah Coleman. I'm going to tell you about Sarah Coleman. Last month, Sarah did 100 plans in a month. Did 100 there. Did it 10 times. 100 plans in a month. She should have done that. She should the bald head. 100 plans in a month. That's special. That's a very special advisor. She's a true bespoker. She's an honour to work with. Can't tell you how proud of her we are. Her and Carl last month in the top 10 advisors in the UK. What a phenomenal production line, okay? So... I hope in any way I don't come across that as arrogant. Like I say, I'm ex-addict, junkie, homeless, born from nothing, from the streets of Winnie Banks. I'm not an arrogant person, but I'm telling you now, this works, these sales techniques work. Look at Sarah Coleman scores, look at Simon Walton's, look at Nathan Steele's, look at the people who come up to see us. It works. I promise you it works. We take people from non-industry, they do these simple processes, and it works. So please embrace and trust it. Don't change your life today. Get on and get to. Those who want to will. Right, so we're going to put a quick video on. It's a video that I watch probably more than any other video in the world, I promise you. There's a reason I watch it more than any other world, because it's quite synonymous with, with me and what I want to achieve and what I feel about these bespokes and taking on these big, massive firms from London and beating them and beating them badly and really taking it to them. Everybody loves an underdog, right? So, we're going to watch a video. It's my most watched video. Nathan Steele's too, actually. That's my most watched video in the world. Colin McGregor was a hero of me for a long time. Why? Because he sort of replicated our journey within the financial service industry. I remember saying, got on these calls and saying, we will be RSC Holmes, we will be Dave Booth, and everyone laughed, and everyone joked, and everyone mocked. Remember when I went to Primus as first ever do at the Belfry? I've never been to Belfry before. And they had this comedian on, this posh man from like My Dentist or something rubbish like that. He said, come on, BBC, eight. Rubbish it was, right? And he sat there doing jokes. And he did loads of jokes about Middlesbrough, and I was thinking, Wait, this can't happen. Do you know what? This can't, they can't do this. Now look at the people on this call now. It's full of working class, decent, hard working, real people. No silver spoons. Everyone's worked for a living here. Everyone's proper people. Okay? Um, and it makes me think about him when he wins a fight and he proves the odds wrong. There's a bit in it where it says, not this time. But we fell short last time. I fell short last time. We got pipped on overall top firm. Some people say it's just a title, it's just whatever it is. It's so much more than that. It's, a, it's an ideology of like dreams come true and hardware pays off and you can climb a mountain within five years. We will win overall top firm this year. I promise you on my life, it'll be done in November. I promise you on my life, it'll be done in November. And it's more than a trophy, it's more than anything. It's, it's a representation that dreams come true and you can do anything in life you achieve to. I promise you now, please, I know these people, I know especially that. So that's my most watched video. I just... I'm going to dose of propaganda. I watch this shit all day. Probably why I'm bouncing all over the place, drinking Red Bull and whatever else. It makes me feel good. It's what it's okay. So, I'm going to talk to you now about this here, the three C's. It's a communication technique. Communication was a short fall of mine. In relationships, definitely. It's definitely an issue in my relationships. It's been a relationship in my leader. It's been an issue in my um, leadership style. My brain goes so fast. Maybe I could never express that to people in a way that it was slow enough for them to understand. When we got pipped and we got beat badly, we didn't win over our soft firm. Getting beat adds, in front of everyone as well, when you said you're going to achieve something, it adds a dose of humility to you. It makes you reassess who you are. Then you get feedback. Feedback's the sugar in tea. It's a secret ingredient to success and winnings. If you've got enough humility to, uh, to embrace it and take it on. Okay, so... I was told my communications were not good enough. I needed to change my communications. So we invented something called the three C's. They are calm, controlled, and conviction. The first one, calm, is the most important one of all. If you're still reading the newspaper, you're a disgrace. You should be at work. However, if you do, I challenge you to read a story saying there was an accident and someone rushed to the scene of the crime panicked and saved the day. Superman never panicked and saved anyone. Doctors never panic on the operating table and save lives. You've got to be calm. Just be relaxed. We're not doctors. We're not Superman. We're not meeting people in the crowds. We're selling insurance or mortgages, whatever it is you guys are selling. Get a grip. It's a conversation. Just be nice and calm. I've already got insurance. Just be calm. It's all right. Good. That's a good thing. I don't want it. That's a good thing. No problem. Just be nice and calm. When someone speaks to you, it's a really good... Remember you're playing tennis, okay? 
when you're having a conversation with someone back and forth, be nice and slow. Can I unmute? Um, Sarah, call me, please. Just give me two seconds. Sarah, you're on. Sarah. Good, just leave it. Leave it, leave it off, right? Okay, so I was going to have a conversation with you. So when you speak to someone, you're going to have a conversation and say, hello, how are you? They come back with, I'm great, thanks, how are you? You've got to count two seconds. It's called the two-second rule. I'm great, thanks. One, two. What are you doing today, mate? One, two. The first thing you're going to say is the wrong thing. I promise you that now. How do we know that? Well, success leaves clues, right? How many people in life have had to say to somebody, I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It was said in the heat of the moment. It was like a rush of blood to my head. I said it in anger or emotion. I shouldn't have said I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I know we all have. I say it quite often <laughs> daily. Quite often. Okay? Don't rush in. Only fools rush in. Just be a little bit slow. Be a little bit late on your reply. And do you know what you do by that? You take control because they're waiting for you to speak. I've already got it. Brilliant. I'm glad you've already got some cover in place. When I spoke to your friend Simon, he had some cover too. Speaking to Kelly, who Simon actually, you know Kelly, don't you? Yeah, look, she also had cover in place. I saved them money. I gave them a free trust. Simon actually had terminal illness cover instead of critical. So with that being a man, they come and see you on Monday or Tuesday, go quiet, done. Control, you're gaining control. That silence, that still, will just give you control. And when you've got control, you'll win. Imagine walking a little Jack Russell where you want to go. You take it on a lead and you take it on a walk. You're in control. It's the same thing on an appointment. It's the same thing on a phone call. You dictate your control. So calm will give you control. Control's easy. The conviction part, how do you have conviction in what you say? You just tell the truth. You just be honest. That's all. Calm. Control and conviction. Use your hands when you speak. Be a master conductor of an orchestra. Just be nice and calm, be nice and still. Be a little bit late, be a little bit slow. When the compound effect kicks in on that and you're consistent with it, life changes. The amount of people say to me now, God, Lee, you're so calm now. Someone said something about Zen. I'm just waiting two seconds to answer. That's all I'm doing. I'm, there's no Zen. I'm not a Buddha. I might look like one, but really I'm just waiting two seconds to reply to your questions. That's all. It's giving me control of myself. It's quite a life-changing technique. I need to have spoken to the group. You want to put some comments below about the three C's that will help you. I promise you it will change life, guys. Okay, so next one. We're going to talk about what you're all here to talk about, I guess, Little Bricks. What is Little Bricks? There's loads of Leeisms or Bespokeisms in our office, and Little Bricks has been the most consistent one. For those of you who go to the gym, like me, you... Um, you know that there's an aggregate of, 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 it aggregate of small gains, little gains, with, it, with some small parts. Remember I said earlier on, there's no lift to the top. You've got to take the stairs. You've got to walk each stair. Two seconds, sorry. Took the camera. Right, so you took the, you, you've got to walk the stairs one step at a time. You've got to build a castle one brick at a time. It's the only way to do it. I wish there was a magic wand where you could just go, six pack, beautiful wife money in the bank, but there isn't. Life's hard. Life's really hard. This is a really hard job. These techniques will help you. They'll make you a little bit more fluid, a bit more fluid, and give you a bit more calm, control, and conviction. Ultimately, you're going to have to go and do these things. But you know what? Don't worry. The answer's intrinsic anyway. You've got all this. You are everything you want to be. Trust me. If I can do this, anyone can do it. Anybody. So the three little pigs, the little bricks. Okay, so it's a story. There's three little pigs. The mum says to them, there's some money each. I want you to go and build a nice house for yourselves and have a nice, live happily ever after. There's the blueprint. That's the foundation. It's going to be hard work. Be careful for the big bad wolf. He'll come and get you if you don't do your job properly. And they go to work. They go off in the different directions. I never understood why they did that, but let's just go with it anyway. The first little pig stops. He gets his blueprint. Now he goes, that looks a bit like hard work. He's a clever little shit. He goes, you know what? I'm not going to bother with all this blueprint talk. The match's on tonight. Borough will play Newcastle. So I'm just going to watch that. A few cans, chill out. Get the lads round. And I'll watch the match. 
There's some straw over there. I'll just use that. Nice little thatched house. That'd be lovely. Gets it all knocked up. Settles down for the night. Opens a can. The big bad wolf comes knocking. He huffs and he puffs and he blows the house down and makes himself some nice pork loins and snaffles it up. The second little pig, he goes out. Remember the word confidence? Language is powerful. Con, in the first part of the word. He cons himself on. Well, I'm doing better than him. I've got Eth with his straw house. I know it's a wood house and it's a log house. And we've all done it ourselves, haven't we? Someone says, you're doing well, aren't you? And you think, not really. I'm just like winging it a bit. And you think, yeah, I'm doing all right. And you get that false confidence. You go, I'll just keep on what I'm doing then. He thinks I'm doing all right. I should be doing all right. It's a good question right here. Who's the person who said you did all right? People come in sometimes and go, I've got some good advice out of so so and so said this. I'm like, what, who, what, who's he? What's he ever done? Why are you taking advice off that? Do you know, what, why are we taking advice off people who've never achieved nothing, never done nothing? Be careful then people giving you advice. So the second little pig gets his house, he uses logs and wood. He builds it up, he's like, it's better than that straw house, I should be all right. I've took less time than him with all the bricks, working in the rain and the snow and weekends. I've got myself a nice log house. Sits down, he's gonna watch Power on Netflix. Puts it on. Knock at the door. We know it is the only way. He huffs and he puffs, he blows it down, and he has bacon sandwiches. Done. See you later on. The third little pig. Now this guy was a trooper. He's a he's a thousand pound a month writer. He's an elite level performer. Do you know what elite level performers do? In any industry, whether it's sport, whether it's art, music, sales. They do the basics well, and they do them consistently, and they just show up every single day. People say he's a genius. It's a lie. There's no such thing. It doesn't exist. Talent doesn't exist. Talent doesn't exist. It's a lie. We tell ourselves that so we can get away with doing a bit less, or that other people are better than us. That's your decision. That's your decision. The third little pig turns up. He gets his blueprint out. Do you know what the blueprint is? It's your vision board, it's your dream board, it's your affirmations. It's your affirmations, okay? And he gets to work, he gets his tool, his bag's nice and organised, he has a little tool belt on. He gets a little hard hat and he just starts laying bricks every single day. It takes him a long time, you know. It rains, it snows, he misses out on days at the pub with his mates, Saturday nights out. He makes sacrifices, he's disciplined. And he lays little brick after brick after brick after brick. His hands hurt him. He feels tired. He feels a bit down. He gets up. He looks at his affirmations, his vision, for what his house looks like. And he lays his bricks. He lays his bricks. Brick after brick after brick. He missed the holiday at Cavos with the lads because he's got bricks to lay. He can't go to pub crawl because he's got bricks to lay. Before he knew it, you know, it might have seemed like a long time. He had a beautiful big castle. Nice little fence around there. Two little flowers, tulips probably. And he had a beautiful little life and lived happily ever after. The wolf didn't even bother. Didn't bother because he knew I can't break that man down. Them bricks are far too strong. He just took his time, he's laid them well. Little bricks build big castles. Actually got stolen this as well by a network the other day, but good. What you share, what lives and grows. God bless. We love sharing. Sharing's a powerful thing in life. So that's the story of three little pigs. So little bricks, what do they mean? The foundations of a castle, that's your values. That's your values as a person. You know, so I've slowed down as I'm coming over there. I was like, rah, 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 rah. As soon as I say three C's, I just drop it the first gear. It's just something that kicks into me mentally now. And I'm so grateful I've been given the grace to have that. And Michelle told me I said slow down as well. So. so the foundations of your castle, that's your values. What are my values? Listen, just be very clear on this, right? I am a bespoker. And I am so proud of that. And after spoke, we've got five values. Be kind, have respect, work hard. When I say work hard, work hard. Don't kid yourself on, don't be a bluffer. Have enthusiasm about everything you do, whether it's making tea, sweeping up, have enthusiasm. It's the key ingredient, it's the most important thing to being a successful sales advisor. Even if you're selling your BMX, if you're selling social media, if you're selling websites, houses, mortgages, life insurance, do it with enthusiasm and you'll do it well. I promise you. I promise you, you'll do it well. And the most important thing at all, what's the last one? <laughs> keeping faith, keeping the faith in everything you do. I go on about God a lot, right? 
So just to be clear on this one, I'm not trying to convert no one. I'm not going to say, sign up here, start contributing towards the church. I'm like a, not even an entry level Christian. I'm just sort of at nursery school or something like that. I'm just trying to be a better person. I believe in a higher power because if I didn't, it can't, it can't not be someone there. It can't be a miracle maker. There has to be one. Otherwise, I'd have been dead a long time ago. That, that's true. That's a fact. I should not be here. I've, I've diced with death too many times. There's got to be some, but there's a reason I'm here. There has to be. So your values are your foundation. Your little bricks, they are your behaviours. They've got to match. Every single day, just lay them brick after brick after brick after brick. You're going to see other people shoot off in the charts. You're going to see other people driving the fast cars. Pay them no due. Focus on the next job at hand, you little brick. Dream big, aim low. Dream big, aim low. Do you know what that means? That means aim on the next job at hand. Live like an addict, one day at a time, one job at a time. Be disciplined. Write shopping lists. Get up early. Do your gratitude. Work hard. Help people. Be kind. Whatever you want to do, guys, it's intrinsic towards you. And if you want to achieve anything you want in life, some of you want to do it and some of you don't. We're going to try one more video. I hope it works. It's Michael Jordan and he's the man. Sorry? Can I do this? Thank you. Before the video. Okay. I'm going to try one more video. But first of all, um, I want to say thank you. I know. I want to say thank you to you for coming on the call this morning. Like, 10 years ago, I never dreamt these type of things would be possible. I never felt there'd be people, professionals and decent human beings like you guys would even look in my direction. You know, I was done. I was completely finished in life. Suicide notes written out and just dead as a person. So to fact that, the fact that I've got amazing people like, you know, my Michelle and, and Kelly and Simon, thank you so much, you guys, for contributing today. It's been amazing. It just makes me so, like, honoured and humbled and grateful here um, that I can give a good life to Kit and Honey and, and be a bespoke and means so much to me. And from the bottom of my heart, every single ounce of gratitude on it, I thank you so much for coming today. It means the world to me. I'm so, 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 so grateful. Thank you. Right, so, um, before we go on to the next section, I just want to say thank you. If you want to do another favour, that's just a tiny taste session. There. There's so much madness in here and at the Bespoke Group here. We can show you so much and we're willing to share with you. Because what you share multiplies and grows. I promise you. What I'd ask you to do is, can you all do a LinkedIn post, please? Tag in Bespoke Financial. Not, it's, when you do a tag, apparently it's at Lee Flanagan, at Bespoke Financial. Then do hashtags, little bricks, hashtag another session. Can we all do a post? Can we get enough posts? Kelly, how many posts are you looking for? Let's have at least 30. If we get 30, we'll do another session. We're going to bring Sam Walton in more. We're going to get some guest speakers. Next session, I'll blow your fucking mind, I promise you. There's so much going on right now. We can take this to the next level. Go and dream big, massive dreams. Go and aim low. Go and focus on your little bricks. When you finish the session, the next five minutes, the most important five minutes of your day. Yes, they are before anyone gets kinky and says something dirty. They are the most important five minutes of your day. Those are going to take action, strike, and match. Match your stone, strike, unless someone grabs it and does that. Send three kind messages to people to say, thank you, I love you. Get going. Three Cs, little bricks, phone calls, profile on your clients. This will change your life, guys. I promise you so much. Hashtag little bricks, hashtag another session. We're going to put a video on for Michael Jordan. Now, for those of you seen The Last Dance, he's an amazing human being. It sort of explains my intensity to winning because I just want this group of people to win and just like, just change the world. I want to say thank you to every single person on the call. Anyone's ever helped us along the way. Terry, my brother, I love you, know, all, all the bespokers. Thank you so much. God bless. Have a lovely, peaceful day, a lovely weekend. We're going to put a video on now. Thank you all so much. Love you. Take care. And they're going to say, well, he wasn't really a nice guy. He may have been a tyrant. Oh, well, that's you. Because you never wanted anything. I wanted to win, but I wanted them to win and be a part of that as well.